Hello, my name is Mary Anna Leonard. I am in the fourth grade. This is a presentation about Black History in Clark County, Washington. Do you know anything about Clark County, Washington's Black History? Well, a lady in Vancouver, Washington thought you should. Her name is Claudia Carter, and she's a member of the NAACP in Vancouver, Washington. Her vision was to showcase African Americans' contributions to Clark County, Washington. For many years, she collected stories, scrapbooks, and pictures to tell the history of Black Americans in Clark County. So my wonderful mother, Ruby Lewis, put together a short film to share a small part of Claudia Carter's exhibit. This exhibit can be seen every February showcasing Black History Month at the Clark County Public Library on East Evergreen and 6th Street. The cultural events, media interviews, and now film, Gladia Carter made strong strides to achieve her goal. Here's a sample of her vision. Ask your teacher how you can see the whole exhibit. Please enjoy the film. James Douglas worked at Fort Vancouver for Hudson's Bay Company, arriving around 1829. In 1838, he was put in charge of the Columbia District while Chief Factor John McLaughlin was in Europe. As the officer responsible in McLaughlin's absence for the Columbia headquarters, Douglas sought to elevate moral standards. He was disturbed by the presence of slavery. With the natives, I hitherto endeavored to discourage the practice of exertion of moral influence alone. Against our own people, I took a more active part and denounced slavery as a state contrary to law, tendering to all unfortunate persons held as slaves by British subjects the fullest protection and enjoyment of their natural rights. George Washington Bush was born a free man in Pennsylvania and became a successful farmer in Missouri. In the late 1830s and early 1840s, reports from the first U.S. residents to cross the continent and settle into fertile Oregon territory were beginning to inspire others to follow the Oregon Trail West. Bush saw westward migration as a way to escape the increasing prejudice he and his sons faced in Missouri. Bush arrived at Fort Vancouver as an American settler in 1844 with his wife and six sons. All black people were ordered to leave the Oregon Territory. Those who refused to leave could be severely whipped. A provision that was known as Peter Burnett's Lash Law, the provisional law declared by not less than 39 stripes to be repeated every six months until they left. These discriminatory laws against African-American settlement in Oregon forced Bush and his family to settle north of the Columbia River in present-day Washington State, not far from Hudson's Bay's Company's Fort, Vancouver, in the present-day Clark County. In 1848, the Lash Law was repealed, but a new law was enacted by the Territorial Legislator on September 21st, 1849, making it illegal for any Negro or mulatto to enter or reside in Oregon Territory. When Washington's territory was carved off from Oregon's territory in 1853, it did not copy Oregon's attempts to bar free blacks from settlement. The few African Americans living in the Pacific Northwest had to move to Washington. The federal census counted only 26 men and four women. In the years leading up to the Civil War, former slaves and free black men and women seeking new lives in the Northwest had little choice but to settle north of Oregon. In 1889, William Owen Bush is the first black elected to the state's first legislator. In 1890, he introduced and helped pass the state's first Civil Rights Act, 
which prohibited racial discrimination in public accommodations. The law entitled An Act to Protect All Citizens in Their Civil and Legal Rights was approved on March 27, 1890. Bush introduced the legislation that led to the establishment of Washington State University. It was also part of the school law entitled An Act to Create a Commission of Technical Instruction and to establish a state agricultural college and school of science and to declare an emergency. From 1899 to 1900, Buffalo soldiers from Company B of the 24th U.S. Infantry Regiment were stationed at Vancouver Barracks. This marked the first time in the history of the post that a unit from one of the Army's four African-American regiments comprised the post-regular garrison of troops. The Washington State Ku Klux Klan, founded by Major Luther Ivan Powell, appeared in Vancouver on March 11, 1922, representing itself as a patriotic Christian organization. Powell's organizing strategy relied heavily on using the membership list of fraternal, civic, and social groups, especially anti-Catholic organizations, such as the Freemasons, and recruiting those already involved in ritualistic secret societies into the Klan. With few blacks in town, the KKK targets others, including Catholics, and Jews. In 1926, Lester Wood became the Democratic candidate for sheriff. He ran up against one candidate who suddenly withdrew as a candidate after his citizenship was called into question and was found to have invaded taxes. The second candidate had ties to the KKK and Lester Wood was elected. Wood, a lifelong resident of Vancouver, was mortally wounded Sunday morning, May 22, 1927, as he led a raiding party on a bootlegging still in the Dole Valley area north central of Clark County. His death came less than seven months after the election. After meeting informally for a few years, Vancouver charters its NAACP chapter with about a dozen members, including David and Bertha Baugh, uncle and aunt of Jared Baugh. Mark A. Smith was its first president. The Portland chapter formed in 1914 with 165 members. World War II and better paying jobs in the shipyards of Vancouver and Portland brought about the single largest increase in Vancouver's black population. After the war, many black families decided to stay here, seeking the American dream of upward mobility through jobs, housing, and education. This NAACP Vancouver branch was founded in 1945 to combat and eradicate the racial discrimination that confronted these citizens in their pursuit of that dream. In 1959, Lucius Bain was voted student body president of Fort Vancouver High School. He was the first black to be elected president of the student body. He was also a star football player where he earned a scholarship to the University of Oregon. Graduating with a BS and MS in education and went on to teach overseas and in Portland, Oregon. In 1971, Willard Nettles Jr is elected as the youngest and first black city council member in Vancouver. He was only 26 
and still remains the one and only African American to serve on the Vancouver City Council. In 1972, Vancouver grapples with a race-driven fight involving more than 50 people and the controversial arrest of a popular black musician, Benny Davis. Also, Vancouver writes its first affirmative action ordinance, giving protections against discrimination based on race or gender. Valerie Val Joshua arrived in Vancouver in 1944. She spent a lifetime service dedicated to the enrichment of the Clark County community. She was a founding member of the NAACP Vancouver Branch 1139 and went on to serve 29 years as the branch's president. The Val Joshua Racial Justice Award was created by the YWCA of Clark County. The award, originally presented to Miss Val in 1989 for her lifelong commitment and work for the elimination of racism. On June 14, 1877, Henry Olson Flipper became the first African American to graduate from the United States Military Academy at West Point. This was despite the fact that he was the fifth African American appointed to the Academy. In 2006, his great great nephew Carl Flipper passes away. Flipper was committed to empowering and educating the disenfranchised and to fostering compassionate support for social and economic justice among the powerful. Over the 14 years he lived in the Portland metro area, he held leadership positions in a number of civic organizations, including the South African American Business Club and the Economic Development Committee for the Interstate Corridor Urban Renewal Area. Mr. Flipper was a student and proponent of both African American and Native American history and culture, taking an active role in the Buffalo Soldiers, the National Black NBA Association, the Portland branch of the NAACP, and many other organizations. At the time of his death, he was the director of the Auxiliary Services of Clark College in Vancouver. In 2011, Dina Perot founded the iUrban Teen Program, a program that exposes non-traditional STEM learners to career opportunities while encouraging high school graduation and extended learning and gives Blacks a leg up. She was moved to create the program when she served in a governor-appointed role on the Commission on the African Affairs in Washington State and observe the increasing high school dropout rate. In addition, for the past nine years, Perot has been the chief organizer of the annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Breakfast in Vancouver. For 13 months beginning in 1899, a company of 103 soldiers from the U.S. Army's 24th Infantry, one of four African-American regiments known as Buffalo Soldiers, garrisoned at the Vancouver Barracks. While in the Northwest, the soldiers participated in military, political, and social activities and raised local awareness of the national policies and practices that beleaguered African Americans. In 1989, Willie Morehouse co-founded the Moses Williams Northwest Chapter of the Buffalo Soldiers 9th and 10th Horse Cavalry Association. In 2019, the first memorial honoring African Americans in the city of Vancouver is dedicated. It includes 
a bench honoring Mr. Morehouse, who also was a local African-American Army veteran. Port of Vancouver is very interesting, okay, because that has a, just a massive history, you know, but African-Americans were a part of that history, you know, and it needs to be known. So this is just a lot of interesting stories that we don't know because it's not told, okay? And if it's not told, then it would never be told, okay? And we have generations that are, are passing, you know? And so we need to get these stories out and down so that future generation would know what's happening. We can do um, legal redress community, education community. We have our Juneteenth community, uh, committee. And so we have that celebration. Like I said, we have the Black History Month celebration um, exhibit. And it's just, and that's what we do. We find out about the history of some of the prominent um, African Americans in Vancouver. I suggest that you go to the library and look at the timeline. It's gonna be up to the end of February. History and the knowledge of history and the people who create the history by living, you know, just living their life, you know, and it becomes history.